Hi everyone, um, hope, hopefully you can hear me quite nice and clear. First of all, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I am here today standing on Ghana land and I pay my respects to elders past, present and future. So, a little bit about what we do here today. Um, well, I'm the course coordinator, as you heard from Uncle Rod, for the Indigenous Knowledges and Societies courses. We run four courses each semester, oh, well, each year, two in the first semester and two in the final semester. Um, before, before I begin uh, about the courses or go anything into the courses, I'd like to say all our courses are led and advised by our advisory team that is made up of many more elders, but Uncle Fred there, Uncle uh, Rod, as you would have already heard, Uncle Louis O'Brien, we have Auntie Suzanne as well, Auntie Rosemary Wanganine as well, Uncle Fred, and sometimes we get Eddie, uh, Uncle Eddie as well. So we have quite a few advisory team members who advise me on how to go about the courses and how to make them amazing, fulfilling and enjoyable for our students. So I'll start off with our first year course, which is Aboriginal uh, Knowledges. So that's Indigenous People, Country and Protocols. This is really a basic course. Um, it's a hands-on approach course. We've been molding it and changing it over the time. And basically what we try to do is a lot of on-country excursions. So I take students and our elders come in and they take them onto the river walks, River Torrens walk. They'll go out to um, the botanical gardens with Trent. They'll have a fire dance this year as well with Uncle Fred. They get a smoking introduction as well by Uncle Fred. And Uncle Louis O'Brien as well as Auntie Suzanne and Auntie Rosemary come on and give a whole load of lectures as well. So you get on, so you get that first hand experience and that's what our course is about. So you learn from the elders, you go on country with the elders, you experience the course, you smell the course, you feel the course, you're part and parcel of it. So that's the first year course really, understanding culture, understanding culture from an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspective rather than you know, a Western perspective, so to say. Um, okay, now the other course that we do, which is another first year course, but it's taught in the second semester. It's called Indigenous Scholarships and the Interplay of Knowledge. Now this was a fantastic course last year. What we did and what we were able to do was, as you all know, it was COVID. So we made the most of what we had, which was Zoom. And um, we were able to invite a whole load of Indigenous scholars from around the world, which was from Africa, from New Zealand, from Canada, Native America. Um, we tried Sweden, but we were unable to get that. But what we had was this um, conversation, almost a collaboration of ideas, of indigenous ideas, about indigenous worldviews from around the world and how their knowledge intersects, how they are so similar and they have their own unique ways of getting that, sometimes a similar message through through their different lens. So that was a fantastic course as well and a lot of students, maybe some that are here today, would have participated in that. And we tend to do something very similar this year as well. Then we have Aboriginal uh, third year course, which is a capstone course, but that's more of a hands-on course where students get to pick a organisation and they'll go out to the organisation and they'll get work ready experience. So they're really participating in some research that they'll put forward to some kind of work that they'll be doing in the future in the indigenous area. Um, and then we get a uh, average 3001, which is an indigenous society's rights and responsibilities course. And that's a third year course. Now that's a little bit more political, a little bit more critical, but what we're doing there is looking at what colonization did. We're exploring some of those colonial log legacies that continue on today, albeit in a different context, but we're actually facing some of those realities. And we're talking about how can we change those realities and what are some of the solutions that we as a society, as an Australian society, come together to look at some just solutions given the injustices of the past and some, so to say, present as well. Um, and then we have an international study tour, which, you know, before COVID, it was going to be down Malaysia. We were going to be talking with some indigenous groups in Malaysia. We were going to take some students out there. They were going to be in the forest, in some long houses, experiencing Aboriginal culture out there. Um, and then we we're going to compare that with Aboriginal culture from here in Australia. Um, unfortunately, as you all know, COVID came in, so that's on a hold, but we're looking at different ways in which we can make that possible as well for the coming years. Um, and on top of that, we're working on a new course now, which is immersive storytelling course, which should hopefully be available next year. 
and that's using virtual reality where we'll be going out to the APY lands and we'll be following the dreaming story of, uh, of that is taught out there and it's going to be across seven sites and we're actually going to go out to the country, out to the land and we're going to film um, <laughs> Auntie Leah who is the custodian of that story telling that story, dancing that story and going through the importance of that story and how and why we should learn from that story and what can we take from it. So that's going to be a new immersive storytelling course which is using virtual reality so that students that cannot go on to sacred land can still watch and feel part of that story as well but understand the importance of stories within or dreaming stories within Aboriginal culture and how Aboriginal knowledge is passed down. So basically our courses are always exploring how Aboriginal knowledge, Aboriginal knowledges have been passed down for centuries and centuries and how we should continue on looking at curriculum and changing curriculum to follow their practical ways of passing knowledge down. So that's our basis and that's what we do. Thank you for listening. Thank you.